Okay then my friends, so the next step we need to take is to create this user validator class and that is going to be the beating heart of this validation. So inside this class we need to basically set up several different things and I've written those out as comments at the top. First of all I've created this user underscore validator dot php. This is where we're going to create the class keeping it separate from the logic inside this index file. But anyway, inside this class, first of all, we need to create a user validator class. Okay, we have done. I've called it user validator. Then we need to create a constructor which takes in post data from the form. So we're going to get the data from this post array and we're going to pass it in when we create a new instance of this user validator. Now, inside there, we need to check the fields that we need to check. So the email and the username, check they're both present in the data that we pass in. And if they are, that's fine. If they're not, maybe we'll send back some kind of error. But anyway, if they are, then what we're gonna do is create methods to validate each individual field. So we'll create a method to validate the username and a method to validate an email. And then finally, once all the checks are done, we're gonna return some kind of array, which will be an error array, and that will contain any errors if there are any. If there's no errors, it will return essentially an empty array. So then, first in here, what I'm gonna do is create a private field called data. Now this eventually will hold the data that we pass in right here, the post data. So for now we don't set a value, we'll do that in the constructor. Then we'll create another private property called errors. And this will ultimately be the errors array that we send back. Now initially it's gonna be an empty array, but if we have errors, we'll push them to this array later on. Then we'll return this errors array at the end. If there's no errors, then we're not gonna push anything to it and we're just sending back this empty array. And finally, I'm gonna say private, and then also we'll make this static because I want someone to be able to check this from just using this class itself. You don't have to make an instance to then check this property. This is gonna be called fields, and that's gonna be equal to an array as well. And these will be the required fields, if you like, the things that we're gonna check. We have to have a value for the username and the email. Now, if there's not one of these values present in the post data that we pass into the constructor, then we're gonna send back some kind of error or trigger some kind of error. So we're gonna check they're both there. And the reason I've made it static is so that if you wanted, you could say use a validator, colon, colon, fields to check the different fields we need to pass in in the post data before we actually create an instance. So it's just for usability, really. We don't have to make it static, but anyway. What I'm going to do now is create a public function, which is going to be the construct function. So function, then underscore, underscore, construct. And this will take in a parameter, which will be the post data. Call it what you will. I'm calling it post data. Then inside, I'm going to say this and then grab the data, which is this thing right here, this private property, and set that equal to the post data array, which we send in. Now that post data is essentially just gonna be this over here, post. That's an array with all the data, right? And it's gonna contain hopefully a username and an email field. Okay, so that's the constructor done. We also now need to make a few more methods. So let me just write the shells of these first of all, and then we'll come back to each one individually. So the first one is gonna be public, and then it's gonna be a function, and this will be called validate form this will be the initial function or method that we call to validate the form then we're also going to have another couple of functions but these are going to be private so private function and then validate username and that's going to be to validate the username field and then we also need another method so private again function and this will be validate email so I've made these two private, meaning that you won't be able to access them outside of the class directly on the instance. They can only be accessed from inside the class and we will eventually call them from inside this validate form method right here. So this will be the one that we call originally. It's gonna get the data right here that we set. It's gonna check that these fields are in there. If they are, that's fine. If not, we'll trigger some kind of error. If they are in there, then we're gonna call these two methods from inside this method individually so we can check each of those fields. Now finally, we are also gonna have another method. I'll make this private again because it makes no sense to be able to access this from outside of the class. So private function, and this will be called add error. So if any of these other things right here, 
If any of those find an error when trying to validate those individual fields, we're going to use this function to add the error to this errors array. So let me now open that up. And in fact, what we'll do is, no, we'll come back to that later. We'll start off up here and do everything in order. So then, the first thing we need to do in here is see what fields are required, these things. And we want to cycle through those and make sure that those keys exist in the post data. Because remember, that's what we call them here, username and email. So if they exist, then they'll be inside this post array and they'll be the values of the keys. So what we want to do is make sure those keys exist when we're calling this function right here because if they don't exist, it means we don't have values for them. And obviously this is not gonna work because we wanna validate those values. So I'm gonna say for each, first of all, and we're gonna cycle through these things right here. Now this is a static property. So to get that, we say self and then double colon, and then we want the fields. And then we're gonna say as field. So this is just a for each loop. We're gonna cycle through the fields and refer to each one of them as the field. OK, so for each field, what we want to do is check if that field exists as a key in the data. So let's do an if check. And in here we say array key exists and we want to pass in two arguments. First of all, the thing we want to check. So the field that's going to either be username or email. Does that key exist? And secondly, in what array do we want to check this? Well, we want to check it in the data array, which will be the post data we send in. So let's say there this and then the data. So we're checking here inside this array of data if each field, because we for each this, each of these exists as a key inside that data. It should do. We need that. We need a username. We need an email. OK, so if it exists, this is going to return true. Now, I'm going to put an exclamation mark in front of that so that if it exists, then it returns false. And if it doesn't exist, then it's going to return true because I only want to do something if it doesn't exist. And the thing I want to do is trigger an error. So we'll use the trigger error function and inside we'll just say field. So dollar sign field. So whatever the field fails on is not present in data. OK, so we're only triggering an error if that field is not present. Now, once we've done this for each check over here, the next thing we want to do is just return down here. So let's return there, first of all. And then we want to, outside of the for each, call these two different methods, because if they both exist, then it's not going to trigger any kind of error. It's not going to return. So it's going to carry on down here. So we need to say now down here this. And then we want to access the validate username method and call that. And we also want to say this and validate email. So we want to call both of those methods, one to validate the username variable and one to validate the um, email. So now inside this validate username, what do we want to do? Well, first of all, I want to trim out any kind of white space. So I'm going to store this in a temporary variable called val and set that equal to trim. This is going to trim any kind of white space from the username data. So I'll say this, we want the data array and now in here we should be able to access the username because that's what we called it over here and obviously if that exists as a key then we can obviously access it like this okay so we're only ever going to reach this code if this key exists and now we're getting this and we're trimming the value of that key so there's no white space anymore in that key now the next thing i want to do is check is that value empty so it could just be that you entered a space or something like that and press submit. And once we trim that, it means it's going to be empty, that value. There's going to be nothing in it. So I'm going to say if, and then inside this if check, we'll say empty. This is a function in PHP to check if something's empty. And we're going to pass in the value. So if this contains nothing and they've just submitted some kind of space or empty white space, whatever that is, then we're going to throw some kind of error or rather add an error to this array right here so we can output that to the user when this error array goes back. So inside here, I'm going to say this and then add error. Remember, this was the method we created down here at the bottom. So we're going to add an error and we're going to pass two things into this. 
we're going to pass the field that's errored, which is username, and we're also going to pass back an error message, which will be shown on the form to the user. So in this case, it's going to be username, which is the field it's errored on, and the message we're going to show is username cannot be empty. Okay. So we have this error being added. We need to obviously accept these arguments or parameters into this method. So let's do that now. We'll say, first of all, the key is going to be this thing over here. That's going to be the key in the array. And then also a value, which is going to be the other thing right here. Okay. So when we add something to this array, it's going to be a key and value pair. So the key is going to be username. The value is going to be this thing over here. And the way we're going to do this is just by taking this and then errors and then assigning it the key and setting it equal to the value. Okay. So now if we were to say in the futures errors username, in this case, we'd get the value back, which is username cannot be empty. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's if the field is empty. Now, if that's not the case, we'll do an else clause right here. And now we're going to do some kind of regular expression match. Now, I'm not going to explain exactly what regular expressions are in this tutorial. They're just basically a way of checking whether a certain string matches a certain pattern. So, for example, I could say I only want you to use letters or numbers. And this regular expression is going to check that. Now, if you want to learn more about regular expressions, then you can check out my whole series on regex on this channel. I'll leave the link down below. But anyway, the way we can do this in PHP is in a couple of different ways. I'm going to say if and then p reg match. This is going to try and match a regular expression to something. And then we're going to put in the regular expression first of all. Now, I'm just literally going to copy this from my repo and paste it in. And then I'll quickly explain it. So we start and end a regular expression with these forward slashes. This means at the start of the string. This means at the end of the string. This right here is a character set and it's saying we can use any lowercase letter, any uppercase letter or any digit zero to nine. And this at the end in curly braces is saying it must be at least six characters long and at most 12 characters long. So that's a simple regular expression that is going to try and match against the value of username that a user enters. So we need to pass in the value as a second parameter so that it can assess that value and check it against this regular expression. So that, remember, is this thing right here. After we've trimmed the white space, we get the remaining value. It's not empty, so it goes to else. So we're checking it against this regular expression now to make sure it matches this pattern. It's just letters or numbers between 6 and 12 characters long. Now, if this is the case, if it passes, it's going to return true. If it doesn't pass, it's going to return false. Now, I only want to do something if it returns false. So again, I'm going to place this exclamation mark at the front, which reverses the Boolean. So now if it doesn't pass, it's going to return true. And therefore, we can add an error in this section. So to do that, I'll say this and add error again. And inside here, again, the error key is going to be the username. And this time, the value is going to be something like username must be six to 12 chars and alpha, if I can spell it, alpha numeric. OK, so that's all we're doing. We're just adding a new error with the key and value down here, which is obviously going to call this thing and add the error. So note, it's only ever going to add one of these errors. It can't add both because if it adds this one, then it's not going to go to the else clause. If it doesn't add this one, it does go to the else clause and it could add this. But if it passes both of these checks, then we don't add an error. We don't need to do anything else inside this function. It just finishes the function and no error is added. OK, so we've done that now. And now we need to do something similar for the email. So again, what I'm going to do is just a similar thing up here. I'm going to make sure that we trim off the white space first of all. So this needs to be the email key now. And then down below, I'm going to do a very, very similar thing. So let me just copy this chunk of code and paste it down here. And I'm going to make sure that the value this time is not empty. If it is empty, then this time the key to the error that we add is going to be email. And we're going to say the email cannot be empty. Now, if it's not empty, then we move on to the else clause and we do another if check right here. Now, this is checking the username, but this time I want to use a built in filter 
to validate the email. So instead of writing our own regular expression for the email, what we can do is use a built-in filter in the PHP language, which is going to validate an email for us. So what I'm going to do is in here, instead use the function filter underscore var. And again, I go through this function and the regex function a bit more in the PHP for beginners series. So if you struggle here, feel free to check out that video as well, or that series in fact. And inside we'd pass two arguments. First of all is the value we're going to try and evaluate. And then secondly is the filter we want to use. And that is filter underscore validate underscore email okay so what this is going to do is basically make sure it's a valid email if it is it's going to return true if it's not it's going to return false now i only want to execute this code and add an error if it returns false therefore we need this little exclamation mark at the start to reverse the boolean all right nearly there so this time the key must be email because this is an email error and down here we'll just say something like email must be a valid email okay so simple errors so there could be several different errors added to this errors array right here and once we've done these two checks then eventually we want to return that errors array so we call these functions like this and in fact we need a little arrowhead there and then after we've called those we want to return the error so let's say return and we want this and then we want the errors array like so now if there's no errors added to this thing over here then obviously we're going to get back an empty array but if there are errors added to this then we'll get back an array with those errors inside it and then we can output those on the front end over here so the user can see them really hope that makes sense but anyway now i think that is this class pretty much done um, if there are any errors in this code, I'm sure we'll pick them up in the next video. So don't worry too much about that now. We are going to test this out in the next video where we're going to try and validate our different form fields.